Cinema Classics is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny D. Loretto. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org and like us on Facebook. Yeah, so we can get up over that 38 number. <laughs> we can break the 38 mark. It would be great. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics. Yes, it is. Currently, maybe a new modern classic is uh, currently in theaters, The Lobster. Oh. This is your favorite movie this summer, you tell it me. It is my favorite movie this summer. It's The Lobster starring Colin Farrell. Yeah, who does a really great job. He's yeah. really, really well cast. Yeah, he's in that mode of the actor who puts on a whole bunch of weight. Mm -hmm. And I've always admired that. Good looking would, guy, yeah. trying to look schlubby. Yep, yeah, and he does. And he does, yeah, he's yeah. put on some pounds. Yeah. Uh, you, but I couldn't help think the whole time, <laughs> you know, might this be better with someone else? Oh, well, might somebody like wait. what if it was Ryan Gosling wouldn't it just instantly be better yeah or uh, Matt Damon or Matt Damon well I don't know could I he don't do know. Shelby you could just do Shelby. just Matt Damon I don't on know. our I last show I thought it was show. interesting that you wanted to talk about Colin Farrell yeah, I do because I thought wow okay John has a lot to say about Colin Farrell because I certainly don't look at I became a real devotee yeah uh, in 2008 when he was in Bruges. Mm -hmm. and uh, Yeah, sort of with, a comeback movie for him. Wow. This is a guy who, until in Bruges, most impressive feature was his eyebrows. <laughs> I mean, Colin Farrell, you know, has been around for a long time. They were grooming him for stardom, I think, you know, early on. He uh, turned up uh, opposite Tom Cruise in Minority Report as the villain of that. that yeah, he movie. played the uh, government operative, didn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah. I thought that was a really good role for him. Yeah, interesting. It, it was an interesting dichotomy, uh, him opposite Cruise. Uh, then he was in Daredevil. He played the villain in Daredevil opposite Ben Affleck, and obviously that was disastrous. But the greatest role of all yeah. in 2004, mm -hmm. can't be beaten, Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, you know, what do they sing around a boardroom? I don't know, it's and crazy. They think Colin Farrell should play Alexander? Yeah, so they dyed his hair blonde, <laughs> and, you know, no luck with the eyebrows. They stayed, they stayed as dark as ever. Yeah, what a misfire that was. Yeah, yeah. So the guy, it's interesting that he has managed to sputter along, having all these really, you know, disastrous failures. Although. Uh, and yet, you know, he's found a new life. In these smaller films. Although, yeah. one of our favorite actors called him the best actor of his generation. And that was Al Pacino. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to discount Al Pacino, Al Pacino right? What does he know? He is an idiot. <laughs> I mean, he's not, you can't believe what Al Pacino says. And you know what he said? What, they, what, they were in SWAT together. Is that the movie they were in together? SWAT? It, what movie were they in? I don't know. I forgot. Is that right? Oh, oh, it was a SWAT. Because <laughs> so we're going to... Okay, come on. That's just silly. And all these guys say the, uh, the person they're starring with is the greatest actor of all time. <laughs> well, I loved him in The New World because I love that movie. Nobody else likes it. And, and, and uh, playing Captain Smith uh -huh. to Pocahontas. You know, who would have thought? Pocahontas. Pocahontas. Yeah. Is that a porn <laughs> film I've not heard of? It sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah. But he did play in Miami Vice. Yeah, again, remember another, that? another television is, remake. Yeah, a stress. I hated right, yeah. that movie. I know, Hope hated it. Took every, it. Yeah, of course it was awful. <laughs> took everything that was great about the series and then just uniformly discarded it and did like a handheld, gritty version of it. So stupid. Well, the, so, the, And by the way, SWAT also is a, a series I love. are. I have to go back. I loved that series as a kid. And uh, I just have to say that... Um, Colin Farrell is no Robert Urich. <laughs> well, in 2009, good Lord knows how many years ago that was, seven years ago, mm -hmm. I really liked him in an Irish film, Undine. Yeah, I didn't see that one, but yeah, was know. that about a mermaid or something? Yeah, well, he's kind of a wacky fisherman, mm -hmm. folk, would you say? Did he? There's a selkie, which is a... The sort of Irish seal person. Yeah. And, uh, it's a lovely film. It's a yeah, lovely film. Yeah. I thought it worked, his whole background worked well for him there, that whole Irish business that he's built on. Yeah. And that one, quite imaginative. Again, he's 
he has found uh, a new life doing these smaller films, more thoughtful parts, less I'm a star, look at me. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And, roles. And, and, and I should have known too, in this, in Amdine, it's Neil Jordan mm -hmm. from The Crying Game. Yeah. This is a director who knows what he's doing. Sometimes. So maybe, so maybe, maybe Farrell needs to be with the director who, who can work him right. Yeah. And for so long, this guy also, you know, cultivated this off-camera bad boy image. You know, he's you know, as though he were a big major star that everybody cared about. <laughs> on his left arm, he's got, on his forearm, he's got, this is brilliant, carpe diem. Wow. Oh, and then right? underneath mm -hmm. that is a Heavy. black black cross. <laughs> so, I don't you talk about being a bad boy, you bet. I'll tell you another one that I really like. Yeah. In 2002. Now, you mentioned... Minority Report. I, I did. Think that was 2002. It. Yes. I think that was a good choice. Thank you. I'm selecting Phone Booth. Okay. Joel Schumacher, I think it is. Yes. Joel Schumacher. Yeah. yeah. Phone Booth. Is this where, that was him? Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought just captured the whole business about, you know, be the individual against the world mm -hmm. and how the Kiefer Sutherland as a, uh, uh, an assassin in a sense. Yeah. is aiming at him and, and closeting him in a phone booth and forcing him to reveal his sins mm. or he's going to shoot him. Something to that effect. It's a right. bizarre premise, but it worked for me. As his anguish as a modern man yeah. trying to live these lives and sinning and then being caught. So I, Yeah, I think you just hit on something when you say his anguish because that's where I think Colin Farrell's career takes a, a turn for the the better okay so you mentioned in bruges and how that was one of your favorite movies of yes. that year and in recent years i think it's his vulnerability in that movie the vulnerability that he finally shows in lobster and no in bruges okay but uh that is the turning point for him okay. it suddenly humanizes him makes him more accessible in some ways talk a little bit more about what it is that he does in that movie in particular that makes it in, in which the, movie in Bruges in Bruges for me it's like a, a European version of Pulp Fiction mm -hmm. you got these two guys waiting and actually uh, it's it's more it's more like waiting for Godot these two guys are waiting for their orders they're hitmen yeah. and that conversation that Tarantino picked on and found that that these are actually real people and they can be talking junk uh, but they can be talking uh, between themselves uh, when they're preparing to do something which is really one mm -hmm. of the worst things that a human being can ever do, kill somebody else. Right. And they're, they're actually able to converse like two grown men yeah. in this wonderful kind of third man atmosphere in Europe, uh, in Belgium. Sure. And, and so anyway, that's what I loved about it. The thing I remember about it, though, is, correct me if I'm wrong, he's, he's suicidal. That, he doesn't want right. He doesn't right. want to do this he job. Has, yeah, he has some pangs of conscience, and uh, and I remember him getting sort of really like having a couple of breakdowns in the movie that I was surprised by. You know, um, they're really emotionally effective, and he seemed, you know, sincerely distraught. And yeah. I thought, wow, I think this is the best I've ever seen this guy. <laughs> anyway, it's Colin Farrell. Who would have thought? on cinema classics but that's what we do we, <laughs> yeah. we we elevate the careers of people you would never think of before here's hoping he'll have another spotty 20 years and we'll revisit him <laughs> at some point <laughs>